The Lodin Foundation was started in 2000 as a modest effort. I would like to tell the story of Lodin through three encounters. My first encounter was with this sturdy, large, wellish security guard and myself, a thin, small Buddhist monk then. We became good friends. And Rob told me he did not finish school because he came from a poor background in wartime England. He worked as a cabin boy on a boat and was deprived of the education due to financial difficulties. So he wanted to help someone who may be also deprived due to financial difficulties. He could spare 50 pounds in a year from his income to support a child. So when I came to Bhutan to visit my family, I asked the school headmaster to identify a deserving beneficiary. And Tenzin, the fourth daughter of a family of eight daughters was selected to be the deserving candidate. With Rob's support, Tenzin has finished her school education, has now even finished her university education and is a proud history teacher today. Meanwhile, Rob has also gone to college after retirement and got his degree. And as for Lodin, since 1999, many friends have come together to help poor children in Bhutan. And in our education initiative, we have funded more than 200 children in schools, set up five preschools, and today fund 69 university scholarships, which are in great need in Bhutan. The second encounter is my meeting with Anne and Jara Tagde, who are here with us today in November 2001. Anne came to learn Tibetan with me, but our friendship soon turned into a partnership to promote entrepreneurship in Bhutan in order to help tackle the new greatest challenge Bhutan faced in the 21st century, and that is youth unemployment. So we started the Lodin Entrepreneurship Program in 2008, which the former Prime Minister Singh Topke went even to call an entrepreneurship movement. We aim to change young people from job seekers to job creators and has trained by now over 6,300 young people, funded some 224 projects across Bhutan and created some 700 jobs. The third encounter was more along the line of my own work as an academic. I used to travel across Bhutan to digitize Bhutan's rare archives in monasteries and temples. On one such journey, the road to the temple was washed away by heavy rain, and I was stuck at the roadside when an old man saw me wearing my bamboo hat. And looking at my bamboo hat, he sang a beautiful ballad. And intrigued by that ballad, I asked him to sing more, and he said, things don't come for free, implying he wanted to get a drink. So I bought him a drink and he sang me many more ballads. He was old, weak, soon to pass away. And it dawned upon me that a lot of Bhutan's oral traditions, endangered archives and other cultures are at the risk of being lost forever. This inspired us to go out and document as early as possible and as much as possible. And to this day, the Lodian culture team has documented some 4 million pages of rare manuscripts and over 3,200 hours of audiovisual recordings. So three, through these three programs, inspired by three encounters, we hope to foster an enlightened and happy society in Bhutan. Through the education program to empower young people and promote an ethos which combines the head heart and hands through our entrepreneurship program to foster an intelligent business culture of responsible producers and mindful consumers, and through our culture program to preserve and promote Bhutan's timeless values of wisdom and compassion. And by doing so, we hope, we aim to produce capable and conscientious citizens, in particular, social entrepreneurs, who we call bodhisattva entrepreneurs working for the welfare of both oneself and others. And through them, by grooming batch after batch, we hope to develop a brand of compassionate business, culture, and a caring economy. This 
we hope will then contribute to the overall development goal of Bhutan, GNS, which balances tradition with modernity, external material comfort with inner spiritual be well-being, and economic development with environmental conservation. So it's our hope and aspiration that Bhutan will, through GNH, become a fountain of holistic and wholesome human progress, however insignificant its size may look. And I hope and pray that you will all take part in this journey and support the initiative.